Google Manager contains an insane amount of buttons, filters and hidden knowledge that you might not have heard about. But some of these hard to find features can be insanely valuable in your FM saves. So I'm gonna show you 10 tips and tricks that I wish I knew sooner when playing FM24. Number 1. The introduction of 5 substitutes instead of 3 has helped us massively with taking off players who are playing bad, got an injury or just need a rest. But what if one of your players has taken a knock and you really want to rest him, but you've used up all of your substitutions? Well in that case you're actually able to take one of your players off the field. In a match, once you've used up all your substitutions, go to the tactics screen and right click the player you would want to take off. You can now see that a new option, take off, has become available. Clicking this option will take the player right off the field, giving the player a much needed rest without requiring a substitution to be available. But be warned, this does leave you with a man down on the field, so only use this option when you're sure that with the time remaining you can see out your results. Number 2. With modern day football scheduling in more and more matches, a lot of managers like to fully rotate their squad for the less important or easier matches, protecting the fitness of their first 11. But doing this in game can be quite tedious, having to replace every player individually, and I can't count the amount of times that I forgot to rotate one of my players. Now you can ask your staff to pick a fully rotated squad, but they might play players out of position or generally doesn't fit your idea of a second choice team. But luckily, there's an option to set this up once and then have it to click just two buttons for the rest of your season to fully rotate in your second choice team. In the tactics screen, put the players into the positions that correspond to your second choice team. Then click the drop down menu next to quick pick, go to manage and then save team selection. Give this team selection a name like second choice team and then click OK. This makes this team selection become available at the click of a button from this same manage menu. You can save your first team selection as well, meaning that you can switch between the two with just two clicks, saving you a ton of time for those rotation matches. Number 3. A lot of managers will know that you can set play instructions for the roles in your tactic. Now this will apply the instruction to any player playing in this role and position. But did you know you can make it a bit more personal? At the top of the instruction screen, you can see a toggle between position and personalized. Switching this toggle to personalized will then make any applied instructions or role changes only apply to the currently selected player for this position. This could add another detailed layer to your tactics, making it possible to make small tactical tweaks based on the specific players who will be playing in those positions. A way that I like to use this functionality is during matches, where if one of my players gets a yellow card, I can add a personalized instruction to ease of tackles. If I then substitute a new player into this position, they won't have this instruction, meaning that they won't be holding back and bringing their full energy into the match. Number 4. Big injuries can be incredibly damaging for players, sometimes even dropping some of their attributes. But there is a way to at least slightly mitigate this. Once the injury icon has turned orange and the player has slowly started returning to training, you can set his training plan to focus on rehabilitation. In the training screen, go to individual and select the player who's got the orange injury icon. In additional focus, the general rehab option will now be available, which will look to recover some of his physical attributes that he might have lost due to the injury. It won't bring back everything but at least you'll put your players back on track. Number 5. One of the most dreaded inbox messages that you can get while playing FM is one of your players coming to you with an issue. The resulting interaction will give you a ton of choices for how to respond, but choosing the wrong one can lead to a total meltdown in dynamics, making it a high stake choice. But in certain situations, it's possible to almost guarantee a successful interaction. A ton of player dialogues will have the option to remind the player of how influential he is in the squad and not make an issue about the current problem. And the great thing is, if the player is actually influential, this dialogue option will see the player almost always drop the issue. So before entering a player dialogue, always check the hierarchy page to see if the player is a team leader or highly influential player. And if he is, you've got your free way out. Number 6. Everyone is always looking for the next best method to find a Wonder Kid, but still gets beaten by teams like Real Madrid and Man City finding hidden gems in the safe before you've even noticed them. But there is a method to play as a little spy and try and beat the big teams to the Wonder Kids they're looking at. Taking Man City as an example, go to the Premier League, head on over to News and select Transfer Rumors. You can keep an eye on this page and if any transfer rumor pops up that a team like Man City is interested in a young player that you haven't heard about, you can try and snatch that player from under their noses. Number 7. If you're managing in a nation like England with strict work permit rules, finding a player that can actually get a permit can be quite difficult. But there's a filter that you can apply when searching for players that can instantly help you out. In the scouting menu, select players and go to new search. 
From the available filters, select the add addition from the additional conditions and then under transfers go to work permit chance. Then switch this filter to is not and then select would probably fail to gain a work permit. Now you've got a filter that only shows you players who don't need a work permit or have a chance to get one, making your life with searching players a lot easier. Number 8. Transfer negotiations can be quite tricky and one of the most annoying things is having the opposing club lock in an additional clause that you don't really want. But there's a sneaky way to prevent this from happening. Before you make your first offer, add in the clause that you don't want. Then click the remove button and select remove and exclude from negotiation. This prevents the opposing club from adding this clause, let alone locking it in, putting you back in charge of your transfer negotiations. Number 9. Maintaining a well-balanced squad is crucial for your team's long-term health, which makes it crucial to get rid of deadwood players on big wages, which can be quite difficult at times, especially for the veteran players. But for these older members of your squad, there's a method to get rid of them and their big wages without having to sell them. You can discuss with these players to let them immediately become a staff member, negotiating a new contract at much lower costs. Select your older player and then under discuss, go to advice and then recommend possible future staff role. You can then Try and convince this player to immediately become a staff member and if he accepts then negotiate a new contract with him as a staff member dropping his deadwood wages number 10 I've left the possibly most controversial tip for last as it can be considered a bit of an exploit. When negotiating a contract with a player, adding or removing clauses will influence his wage demands. Specifically, adding a relegation release clause will often see a player drop his wage demands a bit as he knows that he won't be stuck to the team if the team gets relegated. But the weird thing is that players don't seem to consider how big the risk of relegation is. So if you're relatively sure that you won't be relegated, you can add a relegation release clause of absolutely nothing, dropping the wage demands of your player and saving you some money. I'll let you decide whether that's an exploit or not, but let me know in the comments what you think. And while you're down there, let me know if there's any tips or tricks that I've missed in this video that you wish you knew sooner when playing FM. Check out this video to learn even more things about FM24, helping you become the best possible manager. I'll see you on the next video.